I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and if you're a Verizon customer, well, you've got a lot of different 4G LTE devices to choose from this season. You've got the Motorola Droid Razor, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, and the HTC Resound and they all have their pros and cons. You've got a thin and light Droid Razor, an HTC Resound that's focused on music, and a Galaxy Nexus that has ice cream sandwich. So what do you do when you're confused? You come over to PhoneDog.com and you watch some dog fights. That's what you do, my friend. I've got the Galaxy Nexus over here in one hand and the HTC Resound in the other. We're going to pit them together in a dog fight to see which one comes out on top. The Galaxy Nexus has an ice cream sandwich, but the Resound has Beats by Dr. Dre pre-installed. Also included dual core processors in both of these devices, pretty high-end cameras, front-facing cameras, and other high-end specs as well. Which one's the best? We're going to find out in the dogfight. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, they'll help you walk out working. You get your email, your web, your 4G LT connectivity, and more set up on your new device at Best Buy Mobile. You'll walk out working. Let's take a look at both of these. So continuing on to part two of this video, we need to talk a little bit about the widgets and the customizations because they're both Android devices, but they're very different because you got a stock experience over here and a nice, you know, kind of manufacturer tweaked version over here with the HTC Resound. So come over here and we'll take a look. First of all, by pressing and holding the screen, it does a little bit differently now. You see gallery, live wallpapers, and wallpapers. You don't get the widget option. So the way you do that is you come in here. Well, let's go to one of the five home screens on the Galaxy Nexus. <laughs> Excuse me, and I'll go in here to widgets, and we'll take a look. So let's say analog clock. I'll press it and hold it, and put it out on the main screen. It's that easy. So no real complications, just a little bit different in terms of how you get the widgets and get those onto your home screen. So say battery life, for example, we can bring that one over here as well. Now when you get into one, like the Gmail one, you'll notice that like Honeycomb, it's a dynamic widget. So I can scroll up and down through this widget and access my emails without having to actually go into the application, which is really, really nice. So we can see, you know, for example, uh, Let's do Carolina Nightlife, for example. I can click on that. It brings me right into the Gmail application, which has seen some substantial changes as well. And you can see the header still stays up top with a little picture image or a little image uh, thumbnail, if you will. That if I had a picture for Amer uh, Carolina Nightlife, I could install that or have it on there. And then over here, you can see trash, the typical shortcuts, trash, tag, mark is red, file. And then down here, you'll notice these little three dots. Now, this is the equivalent of the menu button on old Android devices, but since it's all on screen, it's in the application itself. Now, check this out because you can see, depending on which application you're in, Ice Cream Sandwich hasn't quite optimized itself, or the applications, rather, haven't optimized themselves for Ice Cream Sandwich. You can see in Gmail, it's at the bottom, but then when I go over here to uh, TweetDeck, for example, it's over here in the actual... Uh, area with the on screen button. So you can see it's down here at the bottom. Then when you go into speed test, same thing. But then when you go into uh, contacts, for example, you can see it's down here. So it just moves around depending on which application you're in, which is kind of uh, kind of interesting to say the least. Then over here, HTC's always done a great job with personalization. And you can see the shortcut down here, and it brings up this nice personalization menu that's available on Sense 3.5. Now, 3.5 as of right now is available on the Resound and available on the HTC Rhyme in the United States. So my uh, assumption is, and I believe I've heard this somewhere before, they have an exclusive partnership with Verizon uh, for Sense 3.5. Everybody else gets Sense 3.0, and you'll see some changes. Uh, it looks a little bit like the older versions of Sense. But either hit there, or press and hold on the screen and it brings up the personalization menu. Now from there you can access your widgets by pressing there and you can see you get a lot of HTC and Android widgets. So not only do you get the stock ones, but you get some HTC stuff as well. So using the calendar, and I use calendar all the time. Let's switch this around. Let's do messages for example. You can see three different options. I can get kind of a, a thumbnail or kind of a thumb image here where I can flip through and access my messages. I can get kind of an all-in-one look or then I can see here with a preview uh, as well. So I can select that and bring that, let's see, looks like my home screen is full. Now you get seven home screens on the HTC Resound and you can easily access all seven by pinching out and letting go. So that's your kind of you know personalization in a nutshell. You can change some stuff around too with not only the wallpaper but the ringtone and then of course the lock screen on the Sense device. You can add weather and more. So we can do weather for example and apply it. So when I turn the device off and back on, it brings up the weather for Charlotte, and then I can either bring down one of these applications to quickly open it, or I can pull up the ring there. And then to show you what ice cream sandwich looks like, you can access the camera or the lock screen pretty quickly and pretty easily. Let's take a look at browsing on both of these. Now they're both 4G LTE devices, and we'll, let's do hot dog. That was from a review the other day, or from a dog fight the other day. So we're gonna do phonedog.com, phonedog.com, load that up, 
and then we'll come over here and do the same thing on Verizon's 4G LTE network. So nice apples to apples comparison at least with the uh, the network here. And so this one's loading up, we'll wait for it to finish up and then the resound is uh, loading up as well. So you can see, for example, like I was saying, that menu button is now up in the top right-hand corner, and you get the same stuff here, save for offline reading settings, save to bookmark share page, stop. Now, the real benefit here, and before I forget to talk about it, the real benefit of Galaxy Nexus is for developers. You know, you like to hack, you like to root, you like to mod your devices. This is gonna be an ideal device for you because you can do it pretty easily, whereas some other companies have locked bootloaders, it's a little bit more challenging to install the ROMs, the custom ROMs. Not the case on the Galaxy Nexus, but you know, again, I tend to look at these dogfights as more consumer type dogfights. You know, you're an average consumer, let's say you walk in, you're like, which one should I get? Well, that's what this video is for to help you out with that. Now, you get kind of a more of a desktop look and feel here. It's very similar to Honeycomb on the tablets. You just come up here to tabs and you see it shows, picks up right where I left off. And then I can see all these different tabs that I have open and you can just easily add new ones and come back to tabs and then go right back to phone dock. So it's quick and easy. Pinch to zoom, very responsive. It's said that the TI OMAP processor is pretty responsive when it comes to browsing or does pretty well in the browsing department. And it's very true, browsing's nice and responsive. Um, one thing I do notice, portrait to landscape transitions take a little bit too long for my liking. You can see how long that's taking to transition. And even in this case, this is one of the faster transitions I've seen. I've seen it easily take four to five seconds to uh, you know, rotate back and forth between portrait and landscape mode. So keep that in mind if that's something that bothers you. Hopefully they'll fix that in a future software update, but that is, uh, that's that there. Now this one's not fully loaded, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. And you can see pinch to zoom, still relatively responsive, and I just can't get over the display on this device. It is absolutely fantastic, and it's good on the Galaxy Nexus also, don't get me wrong, but just killer over here on the HTC Resound. The display is fantastic. Uh, on this device. Now, you notice back and stop highlighted up there at the top and then I can hit the menu button and hit windows and it leaves me right where I left off or leaves me at that point and I can add a new window. And then if I wanna go back and I'm like, what was I reading? Well, I can pop right back in and be like, oh yeah, something about uh, Apple redesigning iOS or will Apple redesign iOS. So it's quick and easy and again, take a look at the transition effects here in comparison to the, uh, the Galaxy Nexus. Now let's take a look at speed tests on both of these devices because we're quickly running out of time. These videos go so quickly and there's so much to cover. So we'll bring up speed test on both of these and they're both running Verizon's 4G LTE network. So some head-to-head -head comparison between two of the networks and you see again how that menu button suddenly popped down there into the bottom. So make sure we're both on Shelby and we'll load them up here display in megabits per second and we'll begin test on both of these right now. Now call quality on both of these devices has been relatively decent. I've kind of knocked HTC in the past for having a less than adequate um, wireless radio and you know for this case at least with the resound it's pretty decent. Earpiece quality is nice and loud on this. Now one place I have to give this and actually when it comes to call quality it goes to the Galaxy Nexus and I'll tell you why. The audio cancellation, the noise cancellation rather is the best I've seen in a long time. When I was using the Galaxy Nexus several people were like where are you? I don't hear any background noise. You must be in a quiet place, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, no, I'm in my car. You know, I'm on the interstate uh, or, you know, I'm, I'm doing something like that. And there's a lot of noise in the background and you don't hear that. And they're like, no, I don't. I mean, the noise cancellation is fantastic on the Galaxy Nexus. And, uh, you know, while the earpiece is about adequate on both and the speakerphone is relatively decent on both, that noise cancellation is just second to none. And if you're somebody like me that's on the phone quite a bit, it really comes in handy when you're on conference calls or doing something for the office and you're like, you know, they don't hear your, you know, whooshing of the noise, uh, the, the traffic going by in the background or anything like that. It just makes it sound more, uh, more professional. It makes it all around better for you. So you're not constantly explaining to your friends, well, you know, I'm doing this and there's cars everywhere and blah, blah, blah. So Quadrant Standard here on both of these devices. And I don't believe Quadrant Standard is optimized for ice cream sandwich. Take this with a grain of salt, but Quadrant Standard, we always like to do one of these just so we can uh, kind of compare the two. But, you know, again, Definitely take it with a grain of salt. Now, both of these devices do pretty well in the battery life department uh, for the most part. With moderate use, I can definitely make it through the day with the Galaxy Nexus, especially on standby. It does pretty decently on standby. Now, the Resound, I've never really had good luck with HTC devices, and particularly when you look at like a device like this. Why in the world did HTC put a 1,620 milliamp hour battery in this device when it's 4G LTE capable and Verizon's LTE is notorious for taking a ton of battery? Your guess is as good as mine, but you have a 1,850 milliamp hour battery over here, and while it's not the greatest in the world, the battery life uh, is a little bit better with moderate use on the Galaxy Nexus. With moderate use on the Resound, I've had trouble making it through a day, and I define you know, moderate use as calling, texting, doing things like that uh, on both of these devices. 2,176 over on the Resound, 
And then over here, I will have a feeling we'll probably get a low score because again, it's not really optimized for an ice cream sandwich. So let's see here. Hit OK. And let's see, 1,455. So again, 1,455. Don't listen to that. Take it with a grain of salt because, like I said, it's not optimized for ice cream sandwich, but still, it's always fun to do a quadrant standard score. Now, let's load up market really quickly. I want to show you some of the changes to that. And while it's loading up over here, we're going to try to do two things at once in this video. We're going to do, I'm going to show you the contacts, the new contacts layout on ice cream sandwich over here. Now, you can see groups, for example, and then Old Man McTweety Gmail. I can group by coworkers, family, friends. I can add new groups. And then over here, you can see the way the contacts are laid out. And then I have a picture for Phone Dog Aaron. Now, this is a demo phone number that I have here, but you can see uh, I favorited the contact. And again, the menu button magically popped up there. And I can add additional information. And when I go to favorites, you can see Phone Dog Aaron pops up right there. And any additional pictures I have would pop up right there if I had any. And then the call application or the phone application looks just like this. And then you have the menu button right there. And I can come into call log and then I can do it, go directly into contacts and see all contacts with phone numbers. So it's nice and organized. And then over here, market's still loading. Let's try it over in the Galaxy Nexus and see what we can do. So market's loading over here. Apps, music, books, and movies. I just wanted to show this off to you and show you that you can get all these in one convenient place now. Uh, apps, music, books, and movies. And you can sync up with Google Music. So they're trying to create an ecosystem very similar to uh, the iTunes ecosystem. And uh, you know, it's, again, a good step forward for Google. Google Music is nice, and it's nice that they added this to the market. They've got a ways to go but uh, it's a nice improvement on the device. So, you know, both of these are decent devices. I think you'd be happy with either one of these. Like I've said in so many dogfights recently, they're great devices. Now, winner has to be declared, though, and before I do that, let's take a look at camera on both of these devices. You've got a 5 megapixel camera on the Galaxy Nexus, an 8 megapixel camera on the HTC Resound, and both shoot video at 1080p. Now, let's bring over, actually, let me bring over this box of Altoids, see if we can compare these uh, on the camera. So you can see, Again, True HD display makes it look incredibly great on the display, and it has a very fast shutter as well. So, you know, you're, you're taking quick pictures in the daylight, bam, 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 bam. That easy to take rapid shots. And you can see they come out reasonably well. Now, keep in mind, it's a really well-lit situation right here. Uh, I have light shining down, and it's, uh, it's nice to see. But when you're in low-lit areas, I find that the 5 megapixel camera is definitely uh, less than adequate. Now, over here, wait for it to focus in, take a picture. The Resound has a phenomenal camera, and you can really see it over here in the gallery as well. Nice clean picture, not washed out in terms of light. You can see the uh, texture and the grain around the cinnamon there, for example, on the Altoids. And all in all, the camera quality goes to the Resound. Now, both of these do pretty good in the 1080p HD department. They're not going to replace your point and shoot, but they're, uh, they're still pretty decent in that department. Now, winner has to be declared, and the winner is the Galaxy Nexus. Now, you got Beats by Dr. Dre technology over here, which is great. you got a pair of Beats that come in the box, and uh, if music's your thing, take a look at this. One thing I did find with the Resound, though, is even with the 1.5 gigahertz processor, from time to time, it does get a little bit laggy. And, you know, I see lag on all Android devices, but I see it more on this device as opposed to this one. Perhaps it's because it's a stock Android experience and it's not weighted down by Sense 3.5. And Sense is great, but uh, it's fantastic and I would recommend it to the first time Android user. But again, it depends on what you're going for here. If you're a diehard Android user, or you're, at least you're familiar with the platform, you want a nice fast device with LTE with a good battery. To me, having a great battery, having noise cancellation, having, a, uh, having decent 1080p, and a camera that's not the best, but can still take some decent pictures with a nice fast dual core processor that works well in the web browsing department, that's pretty important, and that's where the Galaxy Nexus comes out ahead. If music's your thing, take a look at the Resound. But again, unfortunately, you know, it's kind of hindered by the fact that even though it has a good camera, the battery life's not the greatest. It lags every now and again from time to time, and it's not packing uh, Android 4.0, so keep that in mind. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices, Galaxy Nexus and the Resound. So keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Like us on Facebook because we're just super cool and you should like us. So facebook.com slash phone dog. If you like our content, head over to the Facebook page, click that like button, stop in, say hello, ask me what's up, and be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Phone dog underscore Aaron. And on Facebook, on my personal fan page at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, we'll see you next time. And keep in mind, it's New Year, guys, 2012. Happy New Year to you all.